I going to bust my speaker if I keep doing this? Hello, Sophie here. I'm a 2D illustrator who fell down the rabbit hole that is Blender, and now it's all I want to talk about. So, flipping your canvas and toggling grayscale. Probably the two biggest tricks in any digital artist's tool belt. Naturally, I was on a mission to find an easy way to do both of these from the first time I used Blender. So, stepping away from your canvas for a day or two and coming back to it with fresh eyes is one of the most helpful things that I have found. A much quicker way to do this is simply to flip your canvas and get a completely new perspective on your scene. Now, disclaimer, if this is the first time you're trying this, you will probably be horrified. We've all been there. One second, you think it's great, and then you want to burn it. <laughs> great. This just means that now, um, because you're seeing in a new light, now you see what needs to be fixed, and you can make those fixes, flip your canvas back, be horrified once again, make some more fixes, etc. It is definitely one of the most helpful and soul-crushing tricks. <laughs> So let's run through some scenarios of how we can do this in Blender. First, being that we want to draw something in 2D space. So as usual, let's open up a new 2D animation file and um, start scribbling. So one solution would be to go into object mode up here, select your object, and then we could press R, Z, and type 180. If you'd want to check just a specific portion of your piece, you can go into edit mode, select just, you know, the lines or the part of it that you want to check and do the same thing. R to rotate, Z for it to be along the X axis and 180 to see it flipped. So this is definitely an option. It works great here because our camera is looking directly forward. So you can see from this gizmo up here that we're straight on the Y axis. And our 2D canvas is basically a flat plane along the X and the Z axes. Um, this trick will work less great if we're drawing at a different angle, but more on that soon. Instead, for now, let me offer a counter solution. I like to work by flipping the entire view, because then we can do this magic. So let's click the corner of this screen and drag inward creating a second drawing window. Both of these are looking at exactly the same direction for now. So when you open up a 2D animation workspace, you're looking through the camera lens. To start, make sure your, um, your cursor is hovering over the new window. Let's hit numpad five. I use numpad five because it's the easiest way I've found to get out of camera view while still be looking at your canvas from the same angle. So technically numpad zero is what actually gets you in and out of camera mode. But if your view outside of camera mode is at a weird angle and then you hit numpad zero to look through your camera and then you hit numpad zero again, you're going to be back at that weird view. And that's not what we want. We want to be looking at it from the exact same view as we had while we were looking through the camera. So what numpad five actually does is switch between orthographic and perspective mode. Since your camera can be either orthographic or perspective, but not both, this forces you out of camera mode, but keeps you looking at it from the same view. Right now, um, we're drawing on a 2D canvas, so ortho perspective, we won't really notice a difference. But if we start adding some 3D elements, we may notice it looks a bit off. So in this case, try hitting numpad five again. This will turn it back to the same view that your camera was in, but you'll still be out of your camera. By the way, if seeing your camera is bugging you, you can click it off with this eye icon up here. So from here, we can hit numpad nine. This makes us look at our canvas from the opposite direction. So then what I usually do is make this window a bit smaller and then I have a view of my canvas flipped that updates live while I'm working on it. So I can constantly be checking that proportions, perspectives, 
Everything is making sense, even flipped, which is really cool. So as I mentioned before, we're currently looking directly down the y-axis. What if we want to draw from any angle? What if we want to draw from this angle? So let's erase this, set the drawing plane to view, and then start drawing. As you can see, rotating along the z-axis um, doesn't work like it did before. So let's close and reopen this window so it's the same view as our new one. And then we hit numpad 9, and well, we have the same problem. So it seems like numpad 9 flips your position on the x and y axis, but doesn't touch the z. Um, you can see that from that gizmo up here. To fix this, what I typically do is I use numpad 8 or 2. These seem to rotate the z in either direction about 15 degrees. So the solution isn't perfect. You may need to also play around with it manually just by using the middle mouse button to rotate your canvas. But the cool thing about the solution is that once your view is set up, you don't need to touch this window again. So it's a bit finicky to get started. But then you have, once again, a flipped version of your canvas that updates live while you draw. And also, like, the purpose of this isn't for it to be perfectly flipped, right? The purpose of it is to see your camera from a new perspective, for you to check on things like proportions. And I think that's a pretty decent solution for being able to do this while also drawing from whatever angle your heart desires. So I mostly use this trick at the beginning stages of a piece, the sketching, maybe even the line art. But once you start adding more layers, more grease pencil objects, more details and colors, and definitely if you add any 3D elements, it stops being as useful. Since technically we're not actually flipping the canvas, we're looking at it from the reverse side. So here's the second way you can do this. So we're going to change what this second window shows. So we'll click up here on the editor type and we'll select image editor. And then here, for our image, we'll select Render Result. This will show us our rendered image, which we get whenever we hit F12. And it will be updated every time we render a new version. Now for this example, we'll also change this window down here, again using the editor type, and we'll select Compositor. Nothing shows up at first, because we need to select this box that says Use Nodes and then these two show up. So I haven't played around too much with nodes myself. So don't worry, we're gonna keep it very simple for today. So just select this composite node and drag it a bit farther away. Now we can press Shift A and in the search bar type flip and then just drop that node in between the two. So as you can see, this instantly flips our rendered image. Now the easiest way I found to toggle between flipped and unflipped is actually to select this composite node, press Shift D to duplicate it, and then from the first node, drag the image output into the image of the composite node. Apparently you can have two going at the same time. Um, <laughs> so then what is actually gonna show up in your rendered image is basically just whichever composite node you have selected at a time. So then toggling between flipped and unflipped becomes as simple as clicking on one composite node or the other. Now it's not quite as satisfying as seeing your flipped canvas live updating while you're drawing, but it's still awesome and very helpful. And this actually flips the result of your camera so it'll work no matter how much stuff you have in your scene, which, if you're like me, I have a lot of stuff in my scene by the end of it. This does, however, require that in order to update it, you do need to render an image. And so what I like to do, if you go into Output Properties up here, I change this percentage amount to 25%. This will make your image render a lot more quickly and will make checking on the flipped version a lot less of a hassle. Um, I tend to, you know, do test renders, see how it's looking, you know, every few minutes to every minute while I'm working. Honestly, for me, it hasn't been a hassle to add in that extra step. So 
If you're wondering why there's one minute left and we have not gotten to grayscale yet, it's because it's basically the same thing. Um, so let's just delete this flip node. Uh, press Shift A once again, search for BW and then select the first one, RBG to BW. And we'll make our first, our top compositor show that node. And there you go. You can very easily now toggle between color and grayscale and check how your values are looking and add some more contrast if your scene needs it or all those value things are things. <laughs> yeah, this isn't a value video, um, but it is very helpful to check your values. <laughs> and that's my trick. This ended up being more of a beast than I was expecting, but I do hope it was helpful. Please do comment down below if you have any questions or anything else you'd like to see me cover. Please like and subscribe because I have many more videos planned, including some tutorial series where we're gonna make stuff together. Um, and I'm trying to get one out every Thursday, fingers crossed. So far, so good. Thank you for being here. You could find me everywhere at Sophie Jantak. And I will see you very soon.